Tell me, how did you start learning about chemistry? So I started learning about this when I was like four or five years old. I was looking at the periodic table and I was like, hmm, uh, okay. At four or five years old? Yes. Whoa. What do you love most about it? What, what I love most about it is that there's 118 elements on there. So I researched it on my computer, my TV, my tablet, and I found so much information. So I started telling it to my friends and my parents, and they were just amazed. I think we're all amazed. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> they are. Wow. And you also teach chemistry on social media pages? Yes. Tell us about that. So I do geography also, and I do science, technology, engineering, and math. And speaking of geography, I love to draw the countries and color their flags. And there's one thing about me that you might not know. What's that? I can name the country shapes and their flags without them being labeled. How you learn how to do that? <laughs> well... I have been looking at the world for a lot of times, and I memorize them in my head. A lot of times? Yes. And how old are you? Nine. Nine years old, and you've been looking at a lot of times. We have a common friend that we have together. You know, you know um, Sean, the science kid? Yes. You know that's my buddy, right? Oh, yes. That's your friend, too? Mm-hmm. How did y'all meet? Well, we first met my mom. Is that she mom? She reached mom? out to his mom. And then I was at my house playing with Legos, and he was like, ooh, what are you playing with? I'm like, yes, these are Legos. I use, I use them as decimals. And he was like, oh, wow. And so sometimes we just randomly reach out to each other and teach about science. And sometimes when we're talking to each other, my mom's like, can you please have a regular conversation? <laughs> I was wondering that. So is that what you and Sean do for fun? Yes, we just talk about science together. <laughs> that is amazing. You know what, can we have a little fun with you two together here today? Yes, lots I, of fun. I think he's here. Sean, can you come on out and see us? it feel for you two to finally see each other in person? It feels amazing. Like, like oh my goodness. Wow. I mean, I've always wanted to shake this man's hand because <laughs> I just want to give, like, I just want to give a shout out to this man for being one of the most amazing kid chemists I've ever seen. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel, like, amazing inside my brain. Inside your brain. You two kind of like probably think alike. Yeah. Is that a rare thing to meet kids who think like you? <laughs> oh, I mean, definitely because, <laughs> like, I mean, I personally have an adult brain and. <laughs> Some of us don't even have the brain y'all got. Yeah. Okay. So you two are going to help us learn the periodic table of elements. Oh, this is gonna be real easy. It's, go it's gonna be real easy. Are y'all ready to learn? Yeah. You ready to teach us, Sean and Denzel? Yep. All right, I'm let's see. This guy, but I can do a little bit of chemistry for the fans. All right, okay. Okay, okay. let's start with you, Denzel. Can you tell us about the element number one? Element number one is hydrogen, and hydrogen is the most abundant element in the whole universe. It is found in stars like the sun. And one hydrogen atom is made up of one proton and one electron. <laughs> Woo! That was good. Okay, Sean, you take, you take number two. So number two would be helium. And you may know that helium is in balloons and it makes them rise up because it's less dense than air. But have you ever wondered why it makes your voice really high? 
So that's actually because since helium is less dense than air, it makes your vocal cords have to vibrate faster, causing a higher pitch. Helium is also found in the sun. So element number three is lithium. And lithium is a soft, flammable, and highly reactive alkali metal. It also reacts with water. Just like sodium. We keeping up everybody? Yeah. Okay. All right, Sean, what about number four? Number four would be beryllium. And beryllium is really cool because it's used in x-ray windows and it lets x-rays pass through it. It's also used in aerospace because of how it's so dense and very strong. <laughs> Pencil, how about number five? Oh, well, number five is boron. Boron is a good, good essential nutrient for all green plants. And boron is used in the nuclear industry. All right, y'all are on the roll. Sean, number six. Okay, so all my carbon-based life forms, let's break down carbon. Carbon oh. is the backbone of organic chemistry and all life on Earth. So let's say you're going to greet a fellow homo sapiens, AKA your friend. You can either greet them with hello fellow homo sapiens or hey fellow carbon-based life know, form, what's up? What's up? <laughs> what you thinking? You got number seven? All right, take us away with number seven. Number seven is nitrogen. And nitrogen is, well, it makes up 78% of the whole atmosphere of the Earth. And did you know that nitrogen is used to make nylon, dyes, explosives, and also it's used in coal, oil, and steel. Also, it's used in gunpowder. Mm. Sean, number eight. Number eight is oxygen. And oxygen, you may know, is what your body extracts from the air around you so you can breathe. But did you know that oxygen only makes up 21% of our atmosphere? And if it was any more, we could die because of suffocation. So how could the thing that you're breathing and is helping you live suffocate you? Crazy, right? That was a lot of fun, right, y'all? Yeah. Did you two have fun? Yes, yes. You're just so smart. Thank you.